Picture this, it's your first time registering for college classes and the choices are overwhelming. You want to take Japanese swordsmanship, tattoos of the Russian mafia, and zombies in American culture. The only problem is, they all meet at the same time. Yes, these are real college classes, and I hope you eventually get to take all of them. Sometimes it feels like you have endless options in a given situation, but rest assured there is an actual number of choices and you can use the combination formula to calculate it. In this lesson, we'll talk about how to find the number of combinations with and without restrictions. Let's start with a pro tip. Generally, if you're given an easier combination question, which will usually appear as one of the first 20 questions of the math section of the ACT, you can just multiply all of the quantities together to find how many combinations you have. Let's take a look at an example. On an exam, students must select one short answer question and one essay question to complete. If the exam has five short answer and three essay questions, how many distinct combinations of questions can students select? A is two, B is seven, C is eight, D is 15, and E is 45. In this case, we can just multiply all our numbers together because we have a few different options and can only pick one of each. We know students must choose one short answer question and one essay question. So we just multiply the number of short answer questions to choose from by the number of essays to choose from. We have five short answer questions and three essay questions. So we multiply them to get our answer, which is 15. Choice D is 15, so circle it. For more complicated combination questions where you have to reduce the number of available choices each time, we can either do the math by hand or use a calculator program that's built into all TI calculators. Let's start by looking at the formula that we'll use if we do the math ourselves. We simply divide the total number of combinations by the number of choices factorial. No, the denominator isn't just excited. The exclamation point stands for factorial. The factorial is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n when n is a non-negative integer. For instance, 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Let's use this in a problem. A governing committee is chosen out of 10 people. If there are 3 people on the committee, how many distinct committees could be formed? A is 100, B is 120, C is 300, D is 420, and E is 720. Let's underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. We have 10 different people vying for three seats, so let's mark each seat on the committee that's being chosen. We have 10 different people who can be chosen for the first seat. Since we've already used one person on the first seat, we only have nine people available for the second seat, and then only eight available for the third seat. If we multiply all those together, we get 720. Okay, so here's the tricky part. 720 represents the total number of combinations, but the problem asks for the number of distinct committees that can be formed. So we need to get rid of competing groups. To do that, we simply divide the total number of combinations by the number of choices factorial. So to finish up our question, we need to divide the total number of combinations of committee members, which is 720, by the number of choices factorial, which is 3 factorial. This is simplified to 720 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, or 720 divided by 6. So the number of committees that we can make is 120, which is answer choice B. Of course, we could also just use our TI calculator's built-in combination function. To do so, first type in the number of people we're choosing from, in this case, 10. Next, hit math and scroll over three until you get to PRB, which stands for probability. Press three, which will say NCR. Now type in the number of times that you're picking from your set. In this case, that's three. Hit enter. See, 120 it is. Working that out on the calculator was a lot faster, but it's always valuable to understand the math behind the calculations. Remember, keep practicing these combination problems and you'll have more confidence and speed on test day.